Hello, it's Scott Manley here, taking another look at Kerbal Space Program First Contract. Now, a number of people have been asking about the the part recovery mechanism and how it can be best used to make your space program more frugal. Well, here's an example of a space mission being recovered relatively close to the space center. Now, you just recover it the usual way, and in the vehicle recovery screen, you get a parts a parts menu which tells you that I got 5,217 back. Specifically, I get 97.5% of my value back for being so close to the space center. Worst case scenario, you could get as little as 10% back. Now, let's look at how this might work in an well, in an analog to the Space Shuttle, if you remember, the Space Shuttle used two solid booster rockets on the side, and uh, after they burned out, they were jettisoned on a suborbital trajectory, and they would return and land in the Atlantic under parachute. They would be towed back in and uh, reconditioned and then used on future launches, right? Now, this is the nearest Kerbal equivalent. We're jettisoning these... Uh, boosters and you see them dropping away on their parachutes while the rest of the spacecraft continues its ascent into orbit under the power of its LVT-45 engine. But what happens is we reach 2.5 kilometers and the objects are removed. Now the reason for this is of course that the game physics is only calculated out to 2.5 kilometers. Anything beyond that is either put on rails into its own orbit, and anything on rails that is too deep inside the atmosphere is removed. Now, of course, the way to avoid this happening is to have those objects hit the ground before the rocket leaves the two and a half kilometer distance. Unfortunately, you need to be jettisoning those objects within a couple of hundred meters of the ground. It's not really practical. The other way is of course to switch focus to the objects when they are falling away from the rocket and uh, that's kind of pointless ultimately because the rocket is then the object which is flying up and away and eventually leaving the sphere of influence or the, the physics distance. But let's try that and just see what would happen if we did follow these uh, solid boosters all the way down. You see very quickly their vertical velocity is arrested by those parachutes and gravity and then they begin to fall back to the planet Kerbin. And of course I have the magic of time acceleration to let me do all this very quickly. So, you know, physically there's no problem with these things. The physics uh, works fine. They land safely, but when I go to recover it, well... The game doesn't actually generate a recovery report in this case. Now, there's two things at work. Firstly, in the current version, and this may change, it has to be a part with either a pod or a probe on it. The second is that the game is now automatically removing any debris which is close to the launch pad. Those were close to the launch pad, so they are automatically removed. And that actually helps improve performance because all the debris and uh, wreckage left over from previous failed launches is being swept up and uh, thrown away. Unfortunately, you're not getting credit for it. So yeah, if we want to recover these, what we can do is put probes on them. Easily enough, take uh, radial mount parachutes, of course, to make sure that the, they uh, land safely. There, The probes, of course, are not suicidal. We need to balance those out. But there, that is a probe, or a, that is a solid rocket booster, which can be successfully recovered in the current uh, implementation of the recovery system. Now, uh, this, of course, works the same way as before. We still have to switch to the rocket booster as it falls away and as it returns to the surface uh, but it will be recovered successfully the big problem let's say with this is that an empty solid rocket booster gets you about it gets you less than a hundred funds the probe body costs about 300 so the probe body is actually costing a lot more than the money you're going to get back so it's of questionable utility to spend that much extra especially when uh, you're not guaranteed to recover every single part so really I guess what I'm saying here is it's okay 
to have solid rocket boosters that fall away and get you know destroyed and forgotten about because they are actually very cheap compared to the amount of effort that you have to go to to make them recoverable. But what about regular engines? Well, the regular engines are much more expensive. So there is much more incentive for you to recover those. So uh, here's an example of a way to do this. Now, if you remember, I said that uh, once an object goes beyond 2.5 kilometers, it is put on rails. And then subsequently, anything which is too deep inside the atmosphere is removed. Well, the trick here is to make sure that when it goes beyond two and a half kilometers, it is far enough out of the atmosphere that it will not immediately get removed. And then you have the time between the stage it separates to uh, the time that it starts to re-enter the atmosphere. That's how long you have to get your upper stage into orbit safely so that you can switch away from it and then follow the spacecraft down. Now, the way I've done it here is I've gone into a very, very steep uh, ascent trajectory and then I'm more or less gonna try and burn straight for a lunar orbit or at least a, a lunar altitude orbit since I didn't actually bother to get these things aligned. The steeper trajectory gives me more time to make this orbital insertion. Uh, if you're on a shallower trajectory, then you have less time to make this happen. Anyway, look, we've got it. So uh, what I can do is go to the map mode and switch over to the object in question. Recoverable Mooncraft. Switching to it. Game loads it. And there we go. So it does have probes on it. So in theory, you can activate the parachutes and things like that. But uh, the probes are primarily there because I want to make the object recoverable. So it's coming down on a very steep trajectory. This will not work if you're using deadly re-entry. And uh, that is a whole separate kettle of fish to be dealing with there. Now, this is just going to nosedive through the atmosphere very, very quickly. And those parachutes are also destroyed. So deadly re-entry will rip those things off. If you want to do this with that, then you're probably going to have to have heat shields and uh, I don't know batteries for the probe bodies and yeah it's just gonna be a whole lot harder <laughs> there are of course mods which will help in the other way mods that will keep track of the parts as they leave physics range so that you can then fly them back to the surface and recover them but that still won't get around the limitation of the parts needing to have a probe on them but there we go, a successful landing. You'll also note that this stage was built kind of short and wide. The reason being that when it landed, I wanted it to be it not fall over and destroy things. So in addition to all those parachutes, you need to make sure that the, the object is stable and doesn't destroy itself by falling over. But in the face of all this extra complexity, there is another approach which is equally valid. In this design, the actual booster stage is completely disposable, but because it's built of solid rocket boosters, it's dirt cheap. The cost difference between this one and the recoverable version is greater than what you recover. Ah, uh, which may not be as much as you expected, because launch and staging accidents happen all the time. <laughs> oh, it's always good to watch something go wrong. Look at... Kerfin watching all his uh, launch stage go off ahead of him, literally blazing their trail into the great blue yonder. Yes, by strapping together a bunch of solid rocket boosters, you're going to build yourself a cheaper rocket. Incidentally, struts are free. However, in the real world, solid rocket boosters aren't actually loved that much for launch vehicles. They have a number of problems with them. Uh, they tend to generate a lot more vibration. And uh, in the case of the Ares design, there was a great deal of concern that a launch failure early on would mean that the escape system would be falling through a cloud of a, a cloud of essentially burning solid propellant, which would destroy any parachute it had. But there we go, this thing has more or less put itself into the same orbit, and it could of course then continue onto the moon and probably crash into it. So a cheap disposable stage is absolutely a valid approach early in the game. 
Uh, but it's also possible to go the other way and build an entirely recoverable spacecraft, a single stage to orbit vehicle. Even with this limited number of tech nodes I've unlocked, this does actually fly as an SSTO. It only has like the default engine, some uh, extra tanks and fuel lines. And the fuel lines are obviously needed to spread the spacecraft out and make it wide enough to land. But if you fly this well, it can actually take a pilot into orbit and safely back and recover 100% of it. Now obviously this gets easier if you unlock the other engines in the game with more tech nodes. Uh, in particular jet engines and rapier engines will really help you out, but it's possible if you follow a shallow trajectory to get into a low orbit, provided you're not particularly interested in bringing things like payload to complete your missions. Now in the real world, single stage to orbit vehicles haven't really happened largely because the mass of the fuel tanks is hard to keep low enough so that you can get the, the fuel ratio required to get into orbit. Anyway, the I said 100% recovery. Well, of course, 100% recovery is contingent on putting the spacecraft down intact and in the right location and that's actually not trivial it takes a bit of practice but i'm just going to aim for the desert here and you see that i try to aim for somewhere in the desert and uh, more or less put my uh, periaps down to about 40 kilometers and from there yeah the whole thing does go through the standard descent procedure i have 2.7 units of liquid fuel left those are actually quite useful to have around for you know last minute burns to stop the to arrest my vertical velocity also note the mark 16 parachutes are slightly lighter than the radial parachutes and you should use them when you can but yeah, as luck would have it, I came down in the middle of a mountain range. Yes, landing in the wrong place can in fact be a very, very dangerous situation. So being able to pick your landing spot is actually a really good thing in a uh, recoverable vehicle. And of course, that's where space planes come in. Space planes' real main advantage isn't their jet engines, because you can put jet engines on a regular rocket. Their real advantage is being able to control their descent and put themselves pinpoint back on that runway to get 100% recovery. But this one landed at least intact and I got about 60% of my money back from it. Now I'm not going to go into space plane design here because I did a whole other series on aerodynamics but this is my kind of overview of part recovery and costs of launch in the new Kerbal Space Program. I hope you found it useful. I'll be making more videos as the game comes out. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.